Hey guys, Rocker here. Um, if you're watching this, thank you very much for watching. Um, I've been wanting to do this video for a very, very long time, but this past week's uh, Dad Tales podcast episode kind of really motivated me to just go ahead and do it. It's not easy getting very deep and personal for me, um, even though I am an open book and I tell everybody I'm an open book. It's stuff that is still very, very tough to talk about. Um, something that I think it's still seen as a stigma in society and that is talking about your mental health and uh, sometimes it can be seen as a weakness to try and get help and all I want to do is share with you my story kind of my struggles with it um, and what I've done to kind of get better at it or uh, have it not be so rough and uh, what I want to talk about is three specific events in my life that I think have shaped the majority of where my mental health is uh, the first being Growing up without a father. So this is kind of weird. It's not your typical, well, I didn't have a dad growing up. Um, I did have a dad growing up. Uh, I was born in Mexico, and mom and dad never married, but everything seemed like it was happy and fine. Um, towards the end, when I was around seven, I think they had a falling out, and I think there's more history there that we, my sister and I don't really know. Um, I do know that he came to the U.S. to work and provide for us at some point, and I believe he cheated on my mom, and I think that's kind of probably where things went south. But he never really left us. If anything, my mom kind of left him and brought us along. Uh, we came to the U.S. It was just supposed to be temporary, I believe. Um, legally, we got, a, uh, I think, a visitor's visa or whatever it is. And, yeah, we were just supposed to visit family, and it turned out into <laughs> not really ever going back. We did end up going back a few years after just kind of to visit family and stuff. But my mom ended up finding um, a man that I guess she loved here in the U.S. And eventually we became citizens and we, uh, yeah, we lived with him for quite some time. And he kind of filled that void that um, was left there by my dad. Um, again, I don't blame him. It's nothing he did. My mom thought this was best for us to give us the best future. But uh those first couple of years, um, I found myself clinging on to any sort of a father figure. Um, and I, I found that's a very recurring thing throughout my life. So we'll keep talking about that. But yeah, my mom married this guy. We lived with him for, like I said, a long ass time. But my sister and him never got along and they came to a head. Um, I think my mom likes to think that my sister was getting into drugs and gang activity wherever we lived. And... Uh, what happened was she ended up shipping her to Mexico. And I say shipping to shipping her there, but um, she sent her there. The plan was for us to go back and pick her up during the summer. And it ended up being we stayed down there for a year. And then when we came back, he wasn't there anymore. And this was during eighth grade that we stayed down there. And it wasn't until recently that I found out that there was a lot more issues. He, This man that I kind of came to see as a father figure... Uh, who was my stepdad, who I looked up to and I thought was a really great, you know, human. He provided for us. He played with us. He was a little strange at times with his humor and stuff, but uh, he was nothing but good to me, really. He never, I mean, never hit us, never anything. Um, I know he didn't get along with my sister, but that was about the extent of it. And it wasn't until recently that my mom told me that uh, after... My sister had been sent to Mexico, and he had told her the plan was for us to go get her back. Um, apparently, he put a gun up to her head and said, if you leave me, I'll kill us both. And fuck, that was a very, very scary thing for me to hear and very kind of eye-opening. Um, so it was never about my sister. Um, I think he was a very controlling man, a very... Uh, Everything had to be done his way, and looking back at it, looking back at it now, it um, it's uh, it, it makes more sense as to why my mom left him and why we went down there for a year, and it was more of a safety issue than anything. Um, her trying to protect us, obviously me being a dumb kid, I didn't know that. Um, it felt more like leaving another father figure and not having that the void filled. So all through high school, I was kind of a uh, a dick of a kid, very mean to my mom. I would yell, you know, bad things to her. Um, 
always shove her uh, shove her leaving my dad in her face like hey you're the one who took us away from my dad it's all your fault that this is happening and stuff um, a lot of times where I would hear her cry um, and yeah I was just a dick but uh, yeah I've always found myself clinging to that male role model um, and I don't think people understand how much growing up without a dad or that father figure fucks people up um, from my childhood up until now uh, this job I'm at currently I started working there when I was oh man 12 years ago so I was 20 I guess when I started working there oh man I feel like I was older than that but our warehouse supervisor at the time he was this uh, probably a guy not too much older than me but I found um, me kind of wanting that that attention from him or that approval from him and it's something I've always done and it's something that's always fucked up with my head not having that that person growing up to you know teach me what it was to be a man or teach me how to shave or teach me how to whatever it was um so that was the first thing that really shaped kind of my overall mental health um the second big thing that happened was high school um, i was never bullied i never bullied anyone um, i wasn't popular but i had my good group of friends at least starting off freshman year sophomore year it was a very core group of friends that we hung out with um, some were older though so they ended up graduating two years before me and eventually we all just kind of grew out or grew each other outgrew each other um, so senior senior year in high school I was uh, pretty pretty alone uh, there's some acquaintances that I like to say I had I would talk to them but I never I, I didn't really have a good best friend I never had a core group of friends um, that whole year I was pretty alone um, I think basically all I remember is just going to school lunch times I think I would just maybe go to my car or leave or come back uh, I don't really remember um, but the thing that that really fucked me up in high school was a uh, problem with acne <laughs> might seem kind of small but um, it, it it started progressing like a lot. I remember one very specific moment where I woke up and at that time I believe I was on proactive and I looked I woke up, I was getting ready for school and I woke up and I uh looked myself in the mirror, I was washing my face, getting ready, and I just noticed my face was like covered in pimples and blemishes and I got this overwhelming panic feeling and I started crying and my mom was like, What's happening? You know, what's wrong? And then I just straight up told her, you know, oh, my God, look at my face. It's not getting better. It's fucking worse. It's I, I can't go to school. This is insane. And. Yeah, she took me to a dermatologist, um, a lot of different treatments. Nothing seemed to work. Um, my solution that I found to that, which probably wasn't the right one, but it's what worked for me was I didn't look in the mirror I didn't look at my face for probably three years um, which is kind of strange to say but it's true um, the way I would get ready or the way I would even shave is I would shave this part of my face like just by feeling out where the hair stopped and then I would like put my finger like this just shave around um, same with the bottom part and then the long hairs I would grab scissors and literally just cut just feel out um, no looking in the mirror if I for some reason did look in the mirror I would have like shaving cream all over and um, slowly like I don't know I guess wash it off little by little and then if I saw anything there I would just not look anymore um, seems like a minuscule thing but man not staring at yourself or not thinking you're you're uh, I don't know not being able to look at yourself in the in the mirror is uh, yeah it's a tough feeling feeling ugly feeling like everybody's staring at you um even now now that's a problem my face isn't so bad anymore um i've come to terms with that i still now i you know i actually look at my face and that that didn't happen till man probably eight nine years ago but that period there was very um very dark for me um, even now I have a lot, it's tough to admit, but I have a lot of back knee and, um, I don't, I don't go swimming with the shirt off. Um, when I go to the beach and I lay out there, I'm in full, full shirt. Um, it's one of the things I, I should get looked at. I'm not sure if money is, uh, 
there's money for that, but it's something that I'm embarrassed about. It's something that really bothers me. And I find myself that in any conversation at all, even if it's like on TV or talking with my girlfriend or anything, and any mention of acne and acne problems come up, like there's been UFC fights where the guys have a shit ton of acne and um, my girlfriend or somebody makes a comment about it. And it's, I just like turtle up and quiet up because it's a, a thing that I've dealt with for a lot of my life. And it's a thing that I still deal with. And yeah, it's, it's not easy. I know it's a physical thing. It's a superficial thing, but, um, I know a lot of kids struggle with it in high school. And my only advice for that is, uh, <laughs> I know it's easier said than done, but don't let it get you down. Don't do what I did. Um, don't basically hate yourself for however many years. And the solution is just to ignore yourself. If you will, um, get help, get treatment some that I should have done and I wish I had done um don't please don't pop pop your your face your pimples because uh you can tell I have the scars still from from doing that and I always thought I was doing more help than damage but um long term it fucks you up so just hang in there use over the counter treatments or prescription treatments um yeah so that's the second big thing I know it seems kind of minuscule especially considering that uh, the first one growing up without a dad, but it's something that really fucked me up. And I thought it was, I think it's worth sharing because a lot of people struggle with it. It's not a, it's not something that is uncommon, especially in high school, as you're going through all the hormones, all puberty, whatever. Um, so yeah. And then the final thing and the thing that probably fucked me up the most was my last relationship. Um, the mother of my daughter, who is now 10. Um, very, very interesting relationship. First years were, weren't so bad. I'd like to say they were good. Um, eventually, it got to a point where I think I just got comfortable with having somebody there all the time. Whether it was a good relationship or I knew it was a bad relationship, it's something that um, I didn't want to let go of. And I think she maybe outgrew me or the fact that we were dating since uh, high school all through, I guess, her college. I, I went to college for a year or two, um, but then I just started working. And it just I, I guess it just became comfortable to, to be in that. What now I know was a toxic and bad relationship, but um, I'm thinking she just wanted to discover herself or find herself or something but uh, it did turn into her cheating on me uh, more than once <clears throat> and me my I guess my solution was for that uh, for that was okay well don't talk to them anymore you know we'll work this out but you need to kind of cut them out of out of your life um, not proud of myself uh, I see myself now that that was kind of controlling and probably added to the toxicity in the relationship but um eventually we moved in together um we had a kid together and the thing that happened was she started talking to some guy online playing uh <laughs> halo 3 of all games because i love that game but uh started talking to this guy online she would play with him i would go to work she was at stay at home mom um thing that sucked was i would go to work full time come back home she hadn't washed dishes she hadn't done anything um Besides take care of my daughter, which is feeding her, um, yeah, making sure she nap and stuff. So I would come home, have to wash dishes, have to cook dinner, had to clean up the house. Um, and then not getting the intimacy from her also made me feel really rejected. Like, okay, well, what am I doing wrong or what? Um, but yeah, lo and behold, all behind my back, I started seeing that uh, changes in her. Um, I came home for lunch one day and she was talking to this guy and she was very giddy, very... Um, like at the start of a relationship, you know, you get those butterflies and you're kind of like, um, yeah, really excited to talk to somebody and giggly and stuff. And I started noticing that and I'd asked her about it and she was like, oh, it's just this guy I met. And I was like, okay. Um, and she's like, oh, it's nobody, you know, it's just this guy I've been talking to. I play with, he's, he lives across the country. It was okay. Um, I was never comfortable with it, but I went along with it. I didn't want to be that person to say, well, you need to stop talking to them. Eventually, she gave him his phone number, and 
Uh, I went through extremes. I ended up getting a keylogger for a laptop and found out that she was looking up flights to uh, Baltimore, which is where he lived. And yeah, she was talking to him on the phone all the time. I actually ended up talking to him. He was like, oh, no, you know, we're just we're just friends, whatever, you know, is nothing going on or anything like that. But the whole time he was kind of laughing about it, like, man, you're a stupid dumbass thinking that there's nothing going on here. Um, yeah, eventually she went to work. She didn't get home <clears throat> at the time she was supposed to get home. I was calling her. I was texting her. She wasn't answering. Finally, she came home and she said, what? And what, you know, what do you want or what? And, uh, she just pretty much up and left, um, which was a huge blow to my ego and a f huge blow in general. Like, okay, what the fuck is happening? Um, she moved all her shit out. She went to live with her mom and like a week or two later, she went to go meet this guy across the country, um, leaving me and her daughter. She was there probably for like a week or so. She didn't really care, check in or anything. She just up and left. Um, I think we had maybe talked about it a little bit, but yeah, that, <laughs> that fucked me up. I hurt a lot. Um, I didn't know what the hell to do, especially going to work full time. My mom, I think, and my and her mom were watching my daughter while I was at work. Um, then come home, having to take care of her. Times where she would get sick, and there's nothing but crying. It was a it was a struggle. Um, she really wasn't in the picture for my daughter for a good two years or so. So I was a single dad raising her by myself, going to work full time. Um, while all this was happening, while she still lived with us. Um, I felt the need to be the sole provider for uh, the family. I felt that was my role as a man to, to, to be that, that the guy who brought in the money. So I got myself into a lot of debt. Um, I was using credit cards for everything, uh, buying groceries, diapers, food, etc. cetera. Um, every now and then going out and treating us to stuff that, that we really couldn't afford, but I felt I, I kind of had to do nice stuff for her. Um, she was buying stuff online too and stuff. And, uh, I got in a really, really bad financial situation and it hit really hard that day when she left and I was the only one at home taking care of my daughter. Uh, at that time, I didn't really have friends. I, I think I had one, one, uh, I had two really good friends, but one didn't live anywhere near me and, uh, we didn't really talk. The other one lived by me, but, um, I was still being hopeful that things would work out, so I didn't really want to talk to him about this stuff because I didn't want them to have a bad picture of her. Um, yeah, uh, debt collector started calling. Um, I started blocking, or not really blocking their numbers, but just ignoring all phone calls. I shut myself down. Um, she kind of led me on for a good two years until I finally made the decision to stop it, but she went over there, she came back, and then we we were still talking. We we're kind of being friends. I was still trying to, to get her back, I guess. Um, he came from across the country to here. Um, and then after that visit, she, you know, told me, oh, he's super clingy, you know. Um, I'm sorry now. I kind of realized what we had. So we we didn't really get back together. We just started kind of hanging out and dating again. And the whole time she's seen other people, she's, you know, going out on dates and doing other shit with other people. And I'm kind of in here not doing anything, just hoping that, um, you know, I'll get my family back together. Um, this went along, like I said, for about two years, always back and forth, back and forth of her saying, well, you know, I do love you. I don't love you. I do love you, etc." dragging me along all the while I'm over here shutting down and shutting down, um, at some point, I had suicidal, you know, thoughts. I thought, you know, this would be just so much easier if I just, it just, it just stopped. You know, if I wasn't here, I think people would be a lot happier if I wasn't here. Uh, my daughter would be better off because maybe I'm not giving her the attention she needs because I'm too worried about myself and how shitty I feel. Uh, by the time she did finally come back in the picture and we were splitting time with my daughter, um, I was just really, really far gone. Um, I would go to work. It was a struggle to go to work, come back weekends where I didn't have her. I literally wouldn't do anything. I would eat whatever was at home, right? Eat out. Um, 
but I was just turtled up at home. I didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to see anybody. I didn't want to talk to anybody. Um, I would just sit in my room all day, literally not doing shit. And yeah, it, it was tough. It was a very tough time. I never tried to commit suicide, but I had a lot of suicidal feelings. Um, like I said, I always thought it was easier for everybody if it would just end and um, I'd just be gone. It'd be easier on me, easier on my daughter, easier on everybody else. But I never never attempted it. Uh, I don't think I ever really had that, that one feeling where like, okay, you know, this has to happen or I, I have to do this. Um, eventually something snapped in my head. Um, I started telling myself, you know, you got to get up. You got to start doing things that work, things that you like to do. And it started out with going movies. And it's kind of weird to say that maybe movies saved my life, but it definitely helped uh, get me to where I am now. Um, I've always loved movies. I've loved writing about movies, uh, doing reviews and just kind of analyzing and seeing, well, this worked out. Directors, you know, really good. The uh, cinematography, et cetera, whatever it was. So I started going to the movies every whenever I had a chance. If I my daughter wasn't home with me, I would go to the movies just by myself. Nobody because I didn't really have friends at that time. Then I started reaching out to friends and they started taking me out, going out, um, having a good time. All while I'm still feeling kind of really alone and uh, doing this whole pretty much no contact with my ex. Just whenever it was about my daughter, that's the, about the only times we'd talk. And that slowly started to progress into me telling myself, you know, you're going to be okay. You're a good catch. You're, you have a job. You have a car. You're a single dad, which is going to be tough for certain people. But, um, you know, you're responsible. You're taking care of her. You're, you know, you're a good person. Um, and every day it was the same thing. Tell myself, you know, I'm, I'm going to be okay. This is going to be good. Uh, going out and doing things that I like to do. Um, at some point I ended up doing movie reviews for a local radio station. I would post them on their Facebook and they would read them on air. Um, that was the one year that I took it really, really serious and kind of just focused on that and focused on myself. Um, I was still taking care of my daughter, but my, my mom was helping me out a lot and I was going to the movies every weekend, uh, sometimes two or three movies and writing reviews about it. Um, I was actively going out with friends, wasn't really dating, um, because I was, I really wanted to focus on myself. Um, I actually, when, when I had a Facebook, I came up with a Facebook page called Central Coast Advice. And what I started doing was posting daily motivational quotes that I would find. Um, it started out with my personal Facebook page and then moved on to the, the uh, advice page, if you will. And, you know, a couple people started reaching out to me and I would just share my story with them and let them know that, um, positivity breeds positivity and the more you try and see the positive in things you're the more that the universe seems to reward you um, everything seemed like it was just going to shit when I was just turtling up um, and I'm not saying this to say it's that easy because it really is not um, this whole little talk is taking maybe five minutes but it was a probably like a two-year struggle of a day taking it day by day um, motivating myself day by day and just eventually getting to the point where I liked myself. I liked who I was. Um, I liked the way I looked. Maybe I wasn't the best looking. Maybe I didn't have the best job. But um, I liked who I was and I liked the person uh, I kept becoming and growing to be. So, yeah. I mean, that's that's the thing that probably affected me the most was the split. Uh, though we weren't married, it was like a divorce. And then having to raise my daughter by myself and really isolating myself from friends and family. Um, I think they all noticed, especially my mom. And that's about the time I got really close with her. Uh, when I started focusing on myself and opening up to her and reaching out to family and reaching out to friends and letting them know all the shit that was going on with me. And um, yeah. So needless to say, <laughs> I'm not a professional. These are just my stories, uh, things that I've gone through that were really, really hard for me. Um, I still struggle with growing up without a dad. Um, I do still find myself clinging on to uh, parental figures. Uh, anybody who, um, I guess, motivates me or inspires me, I tend to want their approval. Um, 
and it's something I'm still working on. Um, I've gone to therapy. Uh, so it's not just reaching out to friends and family, but knowing that I had a problem and I had to talk to somebody about it and it really helped. So if you're struggling out there, I'm sorry. All I can say is that you can take everything one day at a time, one hour at a time, 10 minutes at a time. Um, just keep moving forward. That's the important thing. You always have to keep moving forward. Um, no matter how shitty things might get. There is a light at the end of the tunnel, <laughs> as cliche as that sounds. All you got to do and all you can do is keep moving forward. Um, reach out to friends. Do things that you like to do. Um, seek out professional help. Um, I'm no professional at all. All I can do is share my stories and tell you what's worked for me and what still works for me. Um, the guys in the podcast know I've opened up to them. There's days where I wake up and I literally don't want to do anything. I don't know why. I just feel like shit. I feel um, lonely. I feel discouraged. I Literally all I want to do is sit in my bed and turtle up and go to bed and sleep all day. And I don't know why. Um, I probably need to go see a doctor and see if maybe there's an imbalance or some pill that'll work. I don't know. Um, I still get anxious. I stream. I do these videos and stuff, but it's actually really hard. Um, I've never been one to be in the spotlight. So anytime I feel there's a lot of people watching me or focused on me, I get really, really anxious and I start to panic and I just have to kind of like walk away. Um, but all I do is I wake up every day. I thank God. And again, you don't have to be religious, but I thank God for letting me have another day of life. Uh, I ask him for the positivity to make it through that day and that day alone. And yeah, I just take it day by day. Um, at the end of the night, before I go to bed, I just thank him for letting me get through the day. Thank him for my family, the fact that we have health, that we have a good job and that we're here and trucking along. Um, depression, anxiety, it's not something that I think will ever leave. I don't think it's ever something that you get over. Um, so I hate when people say, well, just get over it because um, it's not that easy. It's always a struggle. And I think it's uh, something you're going to deal with the rest of your life. And all you can do, like I said, is keep moving forward. Um, try and find the positive in things, which is why I do Thankful Thursday and Good News Friday. Um, not only just for you guys, but for me. But I found it helps me in seeing... The positive and things versus focusing on the negative things or the things I don't have and um, yeah that's my story um, 27 minutes isn't too bad um, yeah I was just trying to be honest with you guys this is gonna be raw unedited um, I'm hoping maybe it helps you guys I don't know um, it's definitely helped me to talk about it and open up to more people about it everything that I've been through I'm not a professional by any means so please um, if you feel like you need help, go out and reach professional help. Um, all I can do is offer advice based on my experiences. And, uh, yeah, hopefully this helps. If it helps at least one person, um, realize that you're not alone. Uh, mental health is something that affects everybody. Uh, I'm sure you guys have seen all the recent um, suicides with celebrities people who you look up to who you think have money have fame they should be happy it's uh depression anxiety any sort of mental illness doesn't really give a shit who you are or what you do um it's something that i think is prominent in society but not a lot of people talk about it and i think the best thing we can do is share our stories and talk about it and let the world know that we're not alone and there's people out there who can relate and it helps to realize that there's other people with the same struggles dealing with the same exact things as you and they're doing okay or they're still hanging in there um, talking about what works for you you know what helps you get through the day um, awareness is i think going to be the the biggest thing we can do to help others so hopefully this video helps somebody um if you want to share your story with me i'm all open ears um, feel free to reach out in the comment section or uh, DM me on Twitter. On uh, Twitter, I had a, for a while a lot of spam, so I had to shut DMs. But uh, you reach out to me in the comment section or on Twitter at me, and then I'll follow you. I'll open that up. I'm more than happy to 
talk with you, <laughs> lend you an ear, listen to you, listen to your story. Um, and yeah, hopefully help each other one, one story at a time, one person at a time. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you stuck around, it is now 30 minutes in. Um, yeah, thank you for listening and I hope you have a great day.